the tool can be used, the tool of passive resistance. We will not cooperate with injustice. That's we right. shall not pay to be insulted. Right. Segregation is an evil. Yeah. It is contrary to the will of God. Yeah. And when we submit to it, we are condoning an evil. Right. Every man has a right That's and a personal it. responsibility That's to it. ignore certain local laws mm -hmm. when they are contrary to the Constitution of the United States, no matter what the consequences yeah. are. Yeah. This means that we will not ride the buses until we can ride them on a non-segregated basis. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. We will go as lambs to the slaughter. We are walking for a great cause, the cause of liberty. Yeah. If the price is death, we will the message was clear. The black people of Montgomery, Alabama would no longer cooperate with segregation. Footsteps. Footsteps. Footsteps on the cold streets of Montgomery. Freedom just like John. I want to be ready. Keep on. I want to be ready. Come on. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. Footsteps and then a song. As they walked, the world watched and waited. News reporters flocked into Montgomery, Alabama from all over the world. But there was always a song. There were always news reporters. Yes, if you don't mind walking with me. I don't mind at all. How long do you think this bus will come to last? It will last until segregation in transportation is completely eliminated. What will you tell your people tonight at the regular mass meeting? I will tell them tonight to keep on their walking shoes. Walk together, children, and don't you get worried. You really believe nonviolence will work, Dr. King? Yes. You see, we will wear them down by our capacity to suffer. Thank you, Dr. King. There he goes, Dr. King and his nonviolent army. But there was always a song. Sometimes there was a song, and then a frightening silence, and the humming. As they walked, the NAACP was marching from court to court, and the Montgomery bus case was argued in the Supreme Court by Thurgood Marshall. But there was always a song. Oh, honey, oh, honey, my feet is tired and my soul is rested. Child, oh, child, we gotta catch up. We have years of catching up to do. That's why we gotta keep moving. We gotta, gotta keep, keep moving. moving. Onward they walked until the bus company lost $750,000. On all Veterans Day, they walked with memories of World War I. They walked with memories of Pearl Harbor, World War II, and the Korean conflict. They walked with memories of husbands, children, and friends that had paid the last measure of devotion. Memories of Flanders Field, Sicily, and Old Baldy all to make the world a safe place for democracy. And if democracy is to become reality here in America, this, the greatest battle of all, must be won. So they continued to walk. They walked until the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court ruled that segregation had no place in the transportation system of America. They stopped walking. For the first time in the history of Montgomery, Alabama, Negroes began to ride unsegregated buses. Once again, for the President Speaks. As they began to ride unsegregated buses, shotgun blasts came, churches were bombed, Reverend King's house was bombed, and other insults. Yet, forward they marched with the thought of death as their constant companion. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood up for freedom. Time marched on and the cry for freedom became louder, louder, 
and louder. It is now August 28, 1963, a crowd unlike any other crowd that had ever gathered in Washington, D.C., is now gathering in front of Lincoln's memorial. The U.S. senators and representatives have a special place reserved for them. In the crowd, we see Roy Wilkins, executive director of the NAACP, Whitney Young of the Urban League, President John F. Kennedy, the first president to say that segregation was morally wrong, met with a special delegation earlier in the day. Listen. Let's go. The Civil Rights Bill! No, no, no. 80th Congress, 80th Congress, passed the Civil Rights Bill! No, no, no. Johnson Freedom! No, no, no. The Civil Rights Bill! No, no, no. 80th Congress, 80th Congress, passed the Civil Rights Bill! No, no, no. Johnson Freedom! No, no, no. The Civil Rights Bill! No, no, no. And it's Congress, and it's Congress passed the Civil Rights Bill! No, no, no. today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. Yes. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and by the chains of discrimination. Yes. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro is still languished in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. Yes. I say to you today, my friends, even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. Yes. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the truths of its creed. Yes. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Yes, I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. Yes. I have a dream that one day, even in the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that one day my four little children will be able to live in a nation where they are not judged by the color of their skin, yeah. but by the content of their character. Wow. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama with this vicious racist, with this governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, right, right there in Alabama, little black boys and little black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls. As sisters and brothers, I have a dream today. All right. Uh, yes, sir. All right. shall be exalted. Every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places shall be made plain, and the crooked places shall be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Yes, sir. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. 
With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. And this yes, will be God. the day. Yes, yes, God. God. Yes, this will be the day when all God's children will be able to sing with new meaning, my country, tears of thee, sweet land of liberty. Of thee I sing, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside let freedom bring. And if America is to become a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the carbaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from the stone mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from the lookout mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mohill of Mississippi. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And when this happens, and when we allow freedom to ring, and when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day yeah. when all God's yeah. children, yeah. black men, white men, yeah. Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and yeah. sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank yes, God. Yes, 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 The crowd has been caught up in the challenge of a dream. As they leave Washington, D.C., they leave with the dream of full citizenship in their hearts. The song, Someday We Shall Overcome, is heard all over Birmingham, Alabama. This was the beginning of injunctions and arrest. Over 3,000 marchers were arrested, many of them school children. From a Birmingham jail, Dr. Martin Luther King wrote to other ministers. <laughs>
of the 16th Street Baptist Church day after day. By the hundreds they would move out. Yes, sir. And Bull yeah, no. Carter would tell them to send the dogs for us. Yes, sir. And there yes. it comes. Yes, and we just went before the dogs singing, ain't going to let nobody turn yes. me around. Yes, sir.
show somebody who's better than wrong, then my living will not be in vain. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 